I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 25th of December, 2022. This is my vlog of daily life as a world traveler and Merry Christmas to everybody. It's Christmas morning here in Houston, Texas. If you're watching my show in real time, if you're having your coffee at seven o'clock in the morning, central time, eight o'clock Eastern, which is when the show drops typically, uh, then you are aware that, or you should be aware that it is January 1st. Happy New Year to you, uh, which is weird to say on the Christmas episode, but bear with me. We're doing a leap forward to the real time that you're watching this in for a moment. And um, it means it's Sunday morning. So if you're watching this, you're having your coffee, the show just dropped. Good morning, Happy New Year. Hopefully your hangover isn't too bad. Old Lang Syne, all that stuff. I am on my way, well, so if you're watching this at the time it drops, I am at Houston Hobby Airport with the family. We are waiting on our flight. We fly out at about 10 o'clock this morning to head to Costa Rica. We'll be getting into Liberia, Costa Rica uh, in just three hours or less. It's a short flight. Uh, we're on Southwest out of Hobby, which hopefully we've been watching all the stuff this week. It is scary with all the problems that Southwest has been having. We are hoping, hoping, hoping that our flight is not affected. So far, at the time I'm recording this, no flights to Liberia have been affected. So we are very hopeful that everything is going to be fine for us. There have been some delays. That could be a problem, but, but they've all made it through so far. Uh, at the time that we board the plane, Paul is going to leave Leon by car and drive to Piñas Blancas, the Costa Rican border crossing in Nicaragua. So that is what's going on right now. He should have left Leon just minutes ago. We should be sitting at the airport ready to get on the plane. Maybe in just a little, we're, we're at the point where we're probably just getting through security, actually, if you're watching this right when it drops, which only about a sixth of you do. More of you should be waiting for it in the morning, patiently, your coffee brewing, maybe a bagel coming up in the toaster, some English muffins, you know, whipping up some hollandaise sauce, just some ideas for this New Year breakfast morning. And uh, once we land in Liberia, we're just grabbing a shuttle, a uh, taxi like it's a, and uh, zipping off to the border, which is under an hour and a half, where we will meet Paul. Hopefully we have no problems crossing the border. It is New Year's Day, so who knows what things are gonna be like at the border when we get there but I don't know if it's gonna be busy, slow, I don't know if it's gonna be overstaffed, understaffed, I have no idea, right? Could be anything, but it's a Monday morning, so uh, it's, it, it's just hard to say. Um, I don't know that New Year's is a huge thing. I mean, we've been partying in New Year's uh, before uh, in Nicaragua because we couldn't come back to the States last year. And uh, it was it was a pretty good time, but it was mostly extra and heroes who are partying, not the locals. So I don't know how big of a thing it is for the locals, really. Um, so it may not really affect the border crossing much at all. I am walking through Friendswood, Texas. On Christmas Day, it was pretty cold. Not the blizzard cold, but it was still quite cold. Now it's quite warm. It's actually unseasonably warm warm after having been unseasonably cold. So we're doing well there. All right. So that is our travel plans for the day you are watching this on the first, but you'll find out more in a week as to how that went. And of course, check out my shorts. I try to keep you guys up to date in real time uh, with all the stuff going on. Speaking of which, if you've been watching my shorts, you know that I did an epic, epic number of shorts for Christmas, for today. And you'll have to go back, they're a week old at the time that you're seeing this, but there must be 40 or 50 videos that I did of just shorts, so they range from about 10 seconds to about 55 seconds um, of the kids opening their presents. Not necessarily the stuff you wanna dive into, but if you do wanna see uh, my kids and our, our Christmas celebration, you can just bop through those um, and see what they were getting throughout the day. Mostly I did that for their grandfather so that he could follow along and be a part of Christmas, because almost all of them, about 75% I posted within five minutes of them opening that present. So that, uh, that was, that was our, our uh, uh, Christmas multimedia extravaganza uh, explosion. So Christmas morning, uh, we start off, um, we, we always have kind of a busy uh, Christmas Eve like we did last night, and I talked about that yesterday in the episode. Uh, so today wasn't as bad, but we're always tired on Christmas morning. So the adults come down, we get coffee, we relax for a little bit. The kids are always up way before us and just wait for us to kind of allow them to come down. Liesl often manages to sleep. The others do not. Uh, they came down kind of staggered this morning. They didn't have the big uh, kind of surprise or the big like, whoa, it's Christmas thing like they used to for a couple of reasons. One, Christmas is much smaller this year. I know you saw the pictures and uh, it feels like how could that be smaller? Trust me, it is a fraction of what it used to be. We, every year, we have worked so hard to tone down Christmas um, and, and we have. 
right? I think last year kind of gave us a reset where it was like, whoa, there was nothing last year. So this year we couldn't tone it down a lot because we had to make up for doing nothing last year, but we also broke the cycle a little, little, bit, little bit and it was much smaller than it has been in the past. It was much more manageable. Um, I think it was really good, right? This year we had it under control and we shifted a lot of gifts from uh, being things that are uh, a little bit more, I don't know how to put it, uh, frivolous or things that, that it's like a lot of gifts where uh, they aren't things that the kids are, are really specifically looking for and um, really specifically going to use. And I think this year we really heavily shifted into these are really specific things that are needed for the kids. A lot of clothing items that they absolutely need. Uh, a lot of um, uh, artistic stuff, especially for Luchana, that she really will use. Lots of like clay, lots of uh, cooking stuff. Things she's really, really going to use every day because she cooks all the time. And uh, and and one of the cool things she got, she got an egg cooker, and she got a whole kitchen set of her own, so she doesn't have to use uh, the house ones or her mom's or just be without because a lot of things we don't have. Um, so like really cool stuff. So I think this was a generally much that he did not get me. Um, I think generally this was a much better Christmas experience uh, overall for the kids. It was just less daunting and much more on point. And then the big present that, they, that they're going to get is one, absolutely a slam dunk, I guarantee. So, and they've been wanting it all year. It's not, not exactly a surprise. They knew it was likely to be coming because they asked for it nine months ago. We always tell the kids every year, look, spend the year thinking about what big thing you want for Christmas because every year we go through the same thing. Your grandparents ask you what you want for Christmas, you wait until the last second, and then it's very hard to get, and, and you never really have a decision. And this year, they did a great job of like instantly at the beginning of the year saying, this is what we want. They communicated with everyone. They're like, this is the thing that makes sense. This is what we want. Um, so they spent the whole year uh, hoping that they would get it, and they did. So we'll talk in a second. Uh, so they came down the stairs, um, and, and they're older. That was the other thing I was going to say. It's, it's a smaller Christmas this year, and the kids are all older. So like I said yesterday, all of the Santa pretense is over with these kids. They're all older. And keep in mind, we didn't have Christmas last year, which is another reason that, like, Santa doesn't come to Nicaragua. Like, okay. Um, so in... Uh, in that time, Luchana, who's the youngest, went from being nine to being 11. Uh, so, so all of the kids went from the, from the barrier years where maybe there's still some amount of like Santa Claus, maybe. Um, and even then, you know, we know that Luchana was not, she was just kind of playing along with the Santa thing two years ago. So at this point, they're all like, yeah, we're, we're so far past this. Like, is it even a thing anymore? Um, so that whole coming down the stairs is much, they're much more like adults coming down the stairs now uh, on Christmas morning. We do kind of a, a little bit of snacking. People have a little bit of like needing food or whatever. Um, we have the tea ring like we always have uh, that uh, Dominica's mom makes. This year, I think it was better than in other years. I don't know, but I'm, I'm really happy with it this year. Maybe, maybe it's more a Nicaraguan taste thing, I'm not sure. Uh, so we did um, a bunch of opening of the presents, and then about halfway we stopped and uh, Dominica made the blueberry uh, bubble up that we've been doing, I don't know how many years now, but for many years, this has become a Christmas tradition. It's like, it's like Pillsbury um, dough with a bunch of some kind of sugar or something and lots of blueberries in it, and she bakes it, and it's like a big casserole, blueberry sweet casserole thing. It is so good. I look forward to that every year. Um, and I bet we've been doing it for almost 10 years. And it's weird to me, the kids are always like, what is this thing? And I'm like, you've always done this for Christmas. Every Christmas you can remember we did this. How do you not know what this is? But uh, they're surprised every year anyway. Uh, so we did that. Then we opened more presents. The uh, couple of the big items, uh, both girls got a number of Lego things, uh, which they both really wanted. Um, uh, lots of Harry Potter Legos and Lego friends. Those are the big things uh, in general that they like. And that was really Luchana's top general Christmas pick. She's like, I just love doing Legos. I want lots of Legos, which, and Lisa really likes them, but not to the degree that Luchana does. Luchana gets that from me. Dominica likes Legos too and still does them. And I don't anymore, but when I was young, I did so many Legos. When I was Luchana's age, that was, that was my thing. Starting from about age six until probably 12 or 13, just, I did so much with Legos. It was, I was really into it. So it's really cool for me that both of my daughters and my wife uh, enjoy doing Legos and that's something that has continued in our house uh, for all these years. And uh, now that we have the new house, 
in, in Nicaragua, one of the plans is, is to put up shelves and make Lego display shelves so that uh, Luchana has been wanting this for years. She wants a spot where she can put her Legos together and, and have them assembled uh, and, and have them on display all the time. And that's going to be really cool. And Dominica needs that too because she has things like the Hogwarts Castle, which we've not moved down yet. Uh, but when it does move down, she wants to be able to have that on display. I mean, it's like a $400 giant Lego set, right? You, you, you put lights in it and you put it on display. That's what you do. Uh, so, so that was, uh, and Luchana got a lot of art stuff, specifically clay. That stuff you really can't get in Nicaragua. I'm sure you can, but it's very hard. And uh, so she got lots of different types of clay because she loves doing modeling. Uh, Liesl got a lot of board games and stuff. She, she enjoys those a lot. And then the big item that we got, uh, not just for the kids, but the whole family. So this is the, the giant whole family gift for us this year is a Steam Deck. Uh, which all of us have been really looking forward to. It's for those who don't know, I'm gonna show the video uh, of the kids opening it. But this is a portable video game system. It is PC gaming, so all the video games we have on the computer uh, from Steam, they just load on here. It's incredibly powerful, very, very portable. It's able to play like basically every game you, you could, your heart could desire, uh, but you can hold it in your hands. The battery lasts for a really long time. It runs Linux, has really amazing built-in controllers, and it can be attached to a TV. Uh, and we got a stand adapter for it, so you can have Ethernet and, and and HDMI and, and different all kinds of different plugs, keyboard and mouse, and all kinds of stuff going into the base. And you just pop the thing on the base and, and it hooks to a TV that way. So it's kind of like the Nintendo Switch, but the Switch is, you know, horrifically underpowered and extremely limited in its game selection. You can just do only a very few basic things with it. And with the Steam Deck, you have this insanely powerful uh, gaming PC with a massive library of games. Our Steam library alone is between two and 3,000 games, and we're adding more all the time. And, uh, uh, and we haven't even looked at whether we're gonna be able to play GOG games or Epic games or other things on the Steam Deck as well, uh, but they, they don't necessarily need to because the kids got the gaming desktop computer uh, for Christmas as well. That's what's gonna be hooked up in the game room so that we have the setup games that are ready to go all the time. They're gonna be in there. And then we're gonna have the Steam Deck so that the kids can play against each other, so they can play different games at the same time, so that someone can be portable and play, someone can be on the big screen and play. The, the, our kids play video games all the time and uh, a bunch of their devices have gotten old or died and it is time to update multiple things. And so this is a perfect combination of we need a stable family room gaming system so we can all sit down and play together on the big screen reliably. And we need a way for the kids to be able to play in a portable way because, uh, you know, we take trips places and it's just, it's really nice for the big thing that they do because they both are interested in a career in video gaming. So video games are important for them, not just because it's fun, not just because it's healthy and educational, not just because it's uh, a really good use of their time and, and mental development and all those things, but it's also a career research thing for them. And they treat it that way. They spend a lot of time really researching games and how they're made and how stories are told and all those things. So. This is, this is an important thing for them uh, to have. And uh, I think it's gonna be incredibly valuable. And immediately we tried using it and it is fantastic to use. It feels great to hold. It looks cool. The screen is great. It plays games incredibly well. I can't believe how powerful it is. Uh, really impressed for the first day of using it. It only took a little bit to set it up. And uh, I, am, I am super happy. I think the kids are going to uh, find it to be a, an amazing gaming resource. And uh, I bet they're going to use it all week, right? Once they figure out how to use this and get their games on there, they are going to be loving uh, the system very, very, very quickly. All right, that is our Christmas here. After all of that, it's pretty much time for us to chill. It takes until middle of the afternoon before all of those things are done, and then it's time to uh, unbox things and uh, you know plug things in and start charging and, and doing all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of work uh, to get done as far as uh, uh, the post Christmas unwrapping. Plus we have to clean up and, and all those things. And we're just tired right after, <laughs> after all of that. So, uh, dinner is lasagna. Uh, Dominica's mother makes the regular lasagna. Dominica makes the vegetarian and, uh, pretty much we just chill around the house. Thanks for joining me. 
Remember to like and subscribe if you have any comments. How was your Christmas? Merry Christmas, everybody. Get down there, put your comments down below, ask your questions. If you want to talk about the Steam Deck, anything you want to know about the Steam Deck, like seriously, it's super cool. If you're on the fence or don't know about it, let's ask some questions because I'd love to talk about it. Um, and uh, what are your experiences with it? Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymecoffee.com slash Scott Miller. We're going to put that on the screen. And as always, share with your friends, share on social media, tell people about the show. Whew. It's Christmas. It's warm out here. I'm starting to catch up on these episodes. I got a little bit behind because we're, we're traveling and sometimes it's a little bit hard. And holding this GoPro actually burns my fingers as I do this. Uh, it gets really, really hot. Uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.